Welcome to the MD Studio training video. In this session, we'll be going over the basic functions of MD Studio. This video will be divided into four parts, volume manipulation, mesh model creation, mesh model manipulation, and the import and export of mesh models. Before we get started, I would like to go over some navigational tools. Go ahead and left click on your mouse and drag to rotate the volume. You can zoom in and out by holding control key on your keyboard, left click on your mouse, drag up to zoom in, drag down to zoom out. To reposition your scan, go ahead and hold down shift, left click on your mouse, and you can reposition your scan. And finally, if you hit spacebar and left click on your mouse, you're able to roll your image. On the top bar, we have our reset button, which allows you to reset the zoom and position of the scan. We also have our orientation presets, which will allow you to quickly orient the scan. In addition, we have our standard measurement tools on top and clipping tools on the control panel. Volume manipulation. When MD Studio is first launched, an ISO surface volume will appear in the rendering window. This volume is generated from the patient's DICOM data and is based on the ISO value located in the control panel. However, for volume manipulation, we can go ahead and change it to a more familiar view, such as bone view or teeth view. Before creating our model, we would like to isolate our area of interest and sculpt out any regions that we don't want. To do that, we have our sculpting tools, our freehand sculpting, and our polygon sculpting tools. For freehand sculpting, go ahead and draw along the desired region and select the area that you would like to crop out. In this case, I would like to isolate our maxilla, so I'm going to draw around the maxilla and select the area outside of it. Similarly, you can do the same with the polygon sculpting tool. Select the polygon sculpting tool, and then left click to place points along the region. Then select the side that you would like to remove. Here I'm just removing the spine, and you can continue sculpting until you get the desired area that you want. Our next tool is our inverse sculpting tool. When this tool is selected, what was once visible is now sculpted away. As you can see, our mandible has reappeared. This tool is very useful if you're trying to create multiple models of the same scan. I'm going to click inverse again to bring back the maxilla. If you made a mistake, you can always select edit, undo, or control Z to go back a step. You can also revert back to the original volume by selecting Reset Volume. Please note that Reset Volume cannot be undone, so once you have selected, you would have to re-sculpt. I'm going to sculpt out the maxilla again, so we can move on to Mesh Model Creation. Mesh Model Creation after you have modified your volume, the next step is to create a surface mesh model based on the CBCT scan. Use the ISO surface rendering as a preview for the model that you're going to create. Adjust the ISO value to obtain the density threshold level that you desire. As you can see, a lower ISO value displays anatomy of lower density, such as soft tissue, and a higher ISO value would display that of higher density levels, such as cortical bone. There are two types of models that you can create. The first is isosurface model. This creates a digital surface model based on the DICOM scan and will include details such as internal structures, holes, and gaps. First, select a subsample size. This will determine the accuracy and detail of the surface model that you create. A lower subsample value corresponds to more points and triangles used to create the surface, hence more detail and accuracy. A higher value will lead to fewer but larger triangles, and therefore capturing less detail and creates a smoother surface.
When you're ready to create the model, select Create, type in the name, pick a color, and click OK. The other option is the wrapping surface model. This creates a uniform surface model that mends the holes and gaps. However, please be aware that this model type is more sensitive to the noise surrounding the rendered volume surface. To create this model, you can choose from rough, normal, or fine settings, depending on the detail that you would like to obtain. Here is a picture of the model side by side. Also, I would like to point out that the models created are hollow on the inside, which can be observed as I clip the volume. If you would like to recreate any models, click on Create one more time and check Replace to replace the current model. You can also select the model and click Delete key to delete the model. Once the model has been created, text will appear in the lower left-hand corner of the rendering screen. The threshold value shows the ISO value that was used to create the model. Scaled, transformed, and smoothed indicates any mesh manipulation done to the model. Number of points and triangles shows what makes up the mesh model. This is determined by the sculpted volume and the subsample settings that you choose. To view the triangles or points, click on Model Property and change the rendering mode to wireframe or points. You can adjust the number of points and triangles by recreating the model with a different subsample setting or use decimate mesh. Here I'm going to select decimate mesh, enter a target number of triangles or a reduction ratio, and this will allow you to adjust the amount of detail that you want by reducing the number of triangles used to define the mesh. Now that we have created a model, we can go ahead and refine it in mesh model manipulation. Mesh Model Manipulation In addition to creating surface models, MD Studio provides basic surface mesh operating tools to edit imported or created models. First, I'll show you some tools on editing small regions of the model. I am going to uncheck Visible under Volume Control to hide away the volume. That way we'll be able to see the model a little bit more clear. To begin, define your area of interest by selecting the icon Select Mesh Area, then left-clicking to select a series of points on the model. Right-click to finish. Points can then be moved to find adjust the selected area. Five operations can then be performed with the selected area. The first is Mesh Area Filling, which allows you to patch up any holes or gaps for smoother models. Next is flattening, which can squish down any noise. Next, we have our pulling tool, which allows you to push and pull using the widget. Then we have our cutting tool. This tool will allow you to remove parts of the model. When you select the tool, you can select yes to maintain the inner portion or select no to remove the inner portion. Finally, there's the smoothing tool located in the control panel. Power indicates the number of iterations or times the smoothness operation is performed. If I choose a higher number, there will be a more noticeable smoothing. Relax refers to the distribution of triangles on the mesh. A larger relaxed setting creates a smoother surface, but will consist of less details. After you have selected an area in the settings, click on Smooth Selected Region.
If you do not have an area selected, you will smooth the entire model. There is also the Stroke Smooth tool to draw along the model and perform quick smoothing operations. If you made a mistake at any point, you can go ahead and select Edit and Undo. But please note, for model manipulation, you can only undo once. The next few tools are for manipulating the entire model. The Mesh Move tool moves the model relative to the volume with the widget. Mesh Scaling allows you to grow or shrink the model, which you can apply to one direction or the entire model. The Plane Cutter crops the model on the tail end of the yellow arrow. Generally, this tool is very useful for removing larger portions of the model. Last but not least, we have Mirror. This tool allows you to mirror the model over the mid-sagittal plane of the patient. After you have finished with model manipulation, you can go on and export your models. Import and export of mesh models. The MD Studio module provides the capability to import your own models. The models can be of an OBJ, STL or PLY format. To do so, select Import Model, choose a model, and click Open. Select the unit of the model and click OK. The model will then appear on the rendering window. Click on Point Registration to register the model on the volume. Select a few points on the rendered volume, then right click to finish. Find adjust the model's position with the Mesh Move tool if necessary. Imported volumes can then be modified using the Mesh Editing tools. Generally, after you have finished with the workup on a case, you would select Save and save the file as an in vivo file. However, models in MD Studio are not saved during this process. Models must be exported or placed in Model tab in order to be saved. The Export Model feature allows you to save your mesh models as STL or PLY files. Select Export Model and choose a file type. Then click Save. The file can then be used in other design softwares or for 3D printing. Models can also be added in Model tab, which is very useful if you're trying to generate your own content. Click on Add to Model tab. Select Scene Root, then Add as Child of Selected Object. Then you have the option to choose between Generic, Bone, Tooth, or Segment for Model Type. Generic models will be added to model view as a standalone model and will not interact with the soft tissue. Bone and teeth models will affect the soft tissue during prediction. I'll click Generic and click OK. When I go to Model tab, I can see my model and I'll be able to manipulate it to create simulations. When you select a particular model instead of scene root, then select Add as Child of Selected Object. You're establishing a child-parent relationship between the two models. When the parent model moves, the child would follow.
These types of relationships would be useful for cohesive joint movements such as a jaw movement or a knee bend. Of course, the child model can also move independently. To remove a particular model from model view, select the model and click delete selected object. This concludes our MD Studio training video. Thank you for listening. If you have any unanswered questions or if you would like additional information, consult the Invivo reference manual. If you do not have a copy of the manual or still have questions, contact Cavo Dental Imaging Technical Support by calling 866-528-6537.